Welcome back to part three in this module on error handling. In this part, we'll cover how we can adapt the error code approach to do error handling in our own functions. The standard library makes extensive use of the error no library, but in general, we don't use the error no library ourselves. However, we can use the same basic approach. We'll use defensive error checking and return error codes from our functions. That is, we'll look before we leap by checking for invalid input or state before dangerous operations. If invalid, we'll return an error code to the calling function to communicate the type of error that occurred. Before we get into the details, let's discuss our general design philosophy. We will not decide for ourselves how to handle the error. Instead, we'll leave that decision-making process to the calling function and let it be responsible for deciding what to do. This has several advantages. First, it makes our functions more flexible. It leaves the decision-making process to the user of the library rather than deciding for the user how to handle an error. Moreover, different error codes make it possible for the calling function to apply different error handling solutions to different types of errors. Ultimately, this approach avoids any unrecoverable state, preventing our program from simply crashing. Commonly, the things that we'll check for include input validation and null pointer checks, among others. We'll compute any return values via pass by reference variables, preserving the return value for use as an error code. We'll use the same convention that zero means no error. This is consistent with how Booleans work in C. Zero means no error, and non-zero means some kind of error. Let's demonstrate by modifying our Euclidean distance and compute line functions from the previous module to use error codes. Here's our Euclidean distance prototype. We'll use the return type to return an error code. Now, strictly speaking, the only type of invalid input for this function is whether or not the dist variable passed by reference is null. So let's check that. If the dist variable is null, we don't want to dereference it. So we immediately return an error code of one. Likewise, if it's not null and valid, then we'll return an error code of zero. Now let's modify our compute line function to return an error code. Remember, error checking always comes first. There are several types of errors that we can check for here. If either pass by reference variable is null, we can return one. Another type of error would be when both coordinates represent the same point, meaning that it does not define a line. We'll want to distinguish between these two scenarios, so we'll go ahead and return a different error code. Now the final error scenario is when we've got a vertical line, in which case the slope is infinite. We'll avoid an illegal operation like that by returning an error code instead. In the event that there's no error, we return zero. Now let's document that. I've already forgotten what two represents. Let's go back. An error code of two corresponds to the situation where the two coordinates are the same and fail to define a line. Once again, I forgot. An error code of three corresponds to a vertical line.
Using mysterious magic numbers like this can lead to confusion. In our next video, we'll cover how to handle this better. For now, let's go ahead and test this. Zero, 0 to 1, 1 is a valid line with slope 1 and y-intercept of 0. Let's try a vertical line. And we get an error code of 3. One one and one one are the same point, so we'll get an error code of 2. There's no way to directly test a null pointer error but we can do so in our code. And it works. There are several pitfalls to avoid when designing functions to do error handling. In general, functions should not exit from a program. Doing so takes the decision on how to handle the error away from the calling function. By terminating the program, it makes all errors fatal, even if they could be reasonably recovered from. Also, doing so sort of defeats the purpose of error handling by not really doing any actual error handling. Also, functions should not print any error output. Most programs are not interactive, so human-readable error messages are, are generally pointless. The standard output or standard error may not be actively monitored by a human. Instead, a proper logging system should be used in practice to print an error message along with diagnostics and debugging messages. Finally, keep in mind that error checking should always be the first thing that you do in a function. Remember, it's look before you leap. Dangerous operations could leave a program in an illegal state meaning that you may not be able to return an error code and properly handle the error.